So our second model that we uh, are going to introduce is called Support Vector Machine, or the SVM for short. So this is also another very popular uh, machine learning models, uh, one of the popular machine learning models. And this one can be used for classification and also for regression. Okay, so this is different from the logistic regression, which can only be used for uh, classification. SVM can be used for classification and regression. So in this class, we only talk about classification. So, but just let you know that SVM can also be used for the regression. Okay, so let's look at the model. So, the model is that for classification is that we want to find out the the boundary, or in this case, it is called hyperplane that can best separate different classes in the training data. Okay, so for example, here we have two types of the data, and our goal is to find out this line, or this boundary, or this hyperplane that can best separate the data, um, separate the classes in a training set. And the distance between the hyperplane and also close is, is data points, for example, this point to this um, boundary, or in this case, probably this point to this boundary, is called margin. Okay, so it is called margin. So uh, SVM is trying to find out the hyperplane that can maximize the margin. Okay, so, so the goal of this one is to find out the hyperplane that can maximize the margin. And the hyperplane is learned from the training data, okay? So it's using an optimized procedure that maximizes the margin. So again, so starting from this model, so we are not going to the details of how to resolve, how to find out the best parameters. So we just introduce the basic concept of those models. And also, I think the most important part is that in what scenarios we should use those models. Okay, so that is SVM for the classification. Uh, one unique feature for the um, uh, SVM is called kernel trick. So, so that means that so in some cases, uh, it is very hard to find out the hyperplane or the boundaries uh, in the lower dimensions. So for example, in this case, uh, we have two type data. So some type of data is like this, and some type of data is like this. And here they are in this one dimension uh, sample, and it is very hard to find out that decision boundary. Uh, so the kernel trick means that we're going to convert this uh, one dimension into two dimensions. For example, like use um, square of those values or something like that. So we, we're going to do some calculations um, of those uh, uh, of those features. So in this case, we in, in convert that one into a two dimension. So now you can see that here we can find all the, this decision boundary or the hyperplane. Okay, so this this is one type of the data, and also this is another type of data. Okay, so converting the training data from a lower dimension into a high dimensional space is called kernel trick. Okay, however, if we if we really do the kernel trick, so if we are really convert all the data into high dimensions, that requires a lot of computations. So if you have millions of records. So the kernel trick is actually that rather than mapping the points into a higher dimensions, we are using a kernel function. Okay, instead of cal instead of transform those points, we are using kernel function to learn the classifier in the high dimension space. So for example, we can use polynomial kernel or Gaussian kernel. Okay, so those can give you those non linear boundaries. Okay, so those well can give you nonlinear boundaries. Okay, so that's by using kernel trick. Uh, 
The reason we want to use kernel trick is that in some cases, it is hard to find out the, the best decision boundaries. So we want to use a kernel function that convert so that we can learn a classifier in the higher dimensional space. And so those are the, the common um, kernel functions that we can use. So now let's look at the decision boundaries. So if we are using a linear SVM, so this is the, uh, again the original data. If we are using a linear SVM, and the decision boundary will still be a linear. Okay, so it's it's similar like the logistic regressions. If we apply a kernel trick, okay, so if I using using a kernel function, so in most cases we we will use kernel function. So that is a normal SVM. You can see that the decision boundary will no longer be linear. Okay, so the decision boundary will no longer be linear. So in that case, the accuracy will be higher. The model complexity will be also higher. Okay, the accuracy on the training data actually, on the training data will be higher and also the complexity of the model will also be higher. So that means the accuracy is higher so that will also lead to an overfit. Okay, so it will also lead to an overfit problem. Okay, so we need to find out a balance. Uh, so some important parameters that how we can find out the balance. So it is not that complicated, but the accuracy is also okay. So the first parameter is called gamma. Okay, so the gamma determines how far the influence of a single training data can, um, a single training example can reach. So with low values corresponding to a far reach, okay, so that means the model will be less complicated. Okay, so low gamma indicate a far reach, indicate a less complicated result. The second parameter is called C parameter. So that we just exactly introduced in the uh, previous um, uh, slide that when we talk about logistic regressions. So it is a regularization parameter where small c indicate high penalty, indicate a restricted model. Okay, so small c indicate high penalty, indicate more restricted model, okay, or a less complicated model. Okay, uh, so let's see some examples. So first, let's look at the gamma. Okay, uh, so when the gamma become uh, smaller, okay, so when the gamma becomes smaller, the model will be less complicated. Okay, so you can see so when you increase the gamma, so if you keep the C as the same, so if you increase gamma, you can see the model, the decision boundary will become a linear and also when you increase the gamma to a very high so it just you know group each single uh, classes into a separate so each group each cluster of other samples uh, into one group okay so that you can see the accuracy is very very high and it is highly overfitted model okay so that is gamma so Small gamma will give you less comp uh, less complicated model. And if we look at the C parameters, so if we keep the C parameter uh, gamma the same, and also if we increase the C, when we increase the C, so you can see the model will become nonlinear. Okay, so from the linear into nonlinear. So if if we increase the C, uh, the model will be more complicated. And if I'm using a small c, the model will be less complicated or more restricted model. Okay, so that is, those are the two parameters. So gamma and also c. Okay, so let's sum up. So um, this week we introduced two types of the uh, regret uh, of the models. Uh, logistic regression and also SVM. 
Remember that logistic regression model is a regression model that used for the classification. So it called a regression model, but it is for classification. OK, so it is for classification. Support vector machine um, can be used for classification and regression. OK, so in this class, we only talk about classification, but it can also be used for regression. Both models can be extended for multi-classifications. So for example, in our example that we have just two classes, so one for single family home, zero for non-single family home. Multi-classes mean that we have more than two um, outputs, so for a single family home, a townhouse, condo, etc. Okay, so more than two um, outputs. And both can be extended for the multiple classifications. SVM normally requires scaling all the features, okay, so that they are all on the same scale. Okay, so scaling features mean that the value will range from zero to one. Okay, so for example, if you have a uh, like the year that sum is 1990, 1990 and also 2000 and also 2010. And if you scale those values, so the scale the value will be uh, 0, for example, and also the second one will be 0.5, and the last one will be 1. Okay, so that is scaling the data. So SVM does require you scale the data first. Okay, um, SVM also allows for complicated decision boundaries, even you have only a few features. Okay, so if you have a few independent variables, and SVM can also create a very complicated decision boundaries. SVM works very well on low dimension data, so that means you have only one or two features, or the high dimensional data. So for example, you have like 100 or 200 um, features. So SVM works pretty well with low dimensional or high dimensional data. However, if you have so many records, okay, so if you have a very, very long table, then SVM will be less efficient because it doesn't scale very well with huge sample size. Okay, so SVM works pretty well, like if you have very wild data, so you have so many features, so that's fine. However, if you have very long tables, okay, so if, if you have a lot of samples, then SVM does not scale very well. 